Hey, what is going on, y'all? We are back to where it all started with my very first video on my 2024 Chevy Silverado High Country 6.2 liter engine truck. And I'm gonna be doing my eight to 10 month review here shortly after taking a long trip up to the north with this truck. I absolutely love this truck. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what I absolutely hate. I can't stand a few things on this truck. By large, the truck is wonderful, it's great, but there's a few things I can't stand on in this truck, and I hope you watch the whole video to see if you agree, or if this matters to you if you're gonna be making a purchase. Let's go. So as I mentioned in the open, there's not a whole lot of things that I don't like about this truck, but I picked these five things based off of my personal dislikes and the things that I've seen out on the forums that kind of pointed me and say, hmm, maybe I don't like these things as well. And then of course it ended up bugging me. You know how that goes. But I want you to stand by for my number one dislike and it may get you too if you're into technology like I am. So stand by for the number one dislike. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So I'm gonna begin by talking about my first dislike and some of these are gonna be picky, I get it. But the point is, is this truck, you can see what the sticker is, I'm not gonna tell you, this truck costs a pretty penny and there's certain things, high standards that I expect for this thing that didn't necessarily add up or match up. So the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the seats. The seat comfort is not what I think it should be. Now don't get me wrong, these are the leather trim, you can see kind of the um, two-tone, I love the color got the high country stitched into the headrest there. But these seats, they are not as cushioned and as welcoming as I would think they would be for this dollar figure. I get it. To me, this is a luxury truck. I, didn't, I never checked the um, Sierra Denali's or anything like that, but to me, this is a luxury truck. And you should have the utmost comfort in these seats when it comes to cushion and everything else. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said, we took a 10,000 mile trip and I wasn't sore or this or that or whatever the case may be, but I just think these should be a little bit more plush. A little bit more plush and a little bit more uh, cushion, if you will. Um, but the heated seats and the cooled seats work great. So now that we're kicking off that video, let's go ahead and get started on the other four things that I don't like about my Chevy Silverado High Country. So going on to my next dislike, it is going to be some of the downsides of the Super Cruise system. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get into Super Cruise mode. I've got my adaptive cruise control on, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop into Super Cruise mode. I've got the speed that I want, and I also have the steering wheel here right here showing that the road is within uh, its navigation capabilities. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the Super Cruise mode. You see it take over. And so one of the things that I don't like is sometimes the system will abruptly cancel itself. And when I say abruptly, I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it right now, this is normal. So you hit the brake, it says take over. This is normal, and I'm okay with that. What I don't like, and I can't necessarily simulate it right now, I'll go ahead and get back into Super Cruise. It's gonna indicate blue until it takes over green. Okay, so it's taking over green, you wanna make sure it takes over green before you do anything. And so what I don't like is, and I'm gonna simulate this as well because it's not gonna do it. What I don't like is when it cancels and abruptly breaks really, really bad. And so it'll flash at you and it's the electronic systems taking over and saying, hey, you might hit something, but I'm really not. I've never been in any danger of hitting anything. And that's almost more dangerous than, than you know, that's almost dangerous than just allowing the system to go on. I get why it's there, I understand it, trust me, I do. But that's one of my major dislikes is when it abruptly cancels and slams on the brakes for me and then people behind me are like, what are you doing, what are you doing type thing, you know what I mean? But overall, I really like the Super Cruise system, but those are my negatives for the system itself. Let's go on to the next dislike. So for this thing that I don't like about the 2024 Chevy Silverado, high country. You know how there's things that you don't notice until somebody brings it up? And then you're like, oh yeah, that is annoying. Well, let me tell you what this is. And it's not really sunny today, as you can see, it's drizzling out and so on and so forth, kind of overcast. But what I don't like, and it's a very minor inconvenience, I don't like the glare off of this trim right here. 
as you can see the trim runs from left to right it's down here it's right here it's also right here on this side here the left side of the steering wheel every now and again it'll just catch your eye right and so i have the sunroof that was an absolute must for me when i purchased this truck and so and i talked about that a little bit in this video right here where i give my initial impressions of the truck i shot this back i want to say in january when i very first got the truck i'm also going to do like an eight month review as well of the truck too but like i said the trim right here it shines in your eye and 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 you know like i said i don't wear sunglasses all the time either so that's also a thing but i'm gonna link into the description a product from amazon that'll let you cover them if you want to do that i don't want to do that i think it's fine it doesn't annoy me enough to want to do that but i just wanted to point that out as something that you might want to fix for yourself if you're you know i'm only 5'10 so but you know if you're six foot and it's hitting you just the right way or whatever the case should be and you want to fix it that product is in the description and you can go ahead and grab it now with that being said let's go ahead and go to the next thing i don't like Continuing with the top five things that I don't care for with this Chevy Silverado. As you can see right here on the heads up display, the HUD, it indicates the compass direction that I'm currently going in. And so when you hotspot to the infotainment system, that goes away. You can no longer choose it as one of the options. The directions take the place of the actual compass. And so what happened was, is I was traveling up north on this last trip, and you can see this video about that up here in the corner. When I was traveling during my last trip, I wanted to verify what direction we were heading in with a compass. And so because the GPS directions replace this and they're no longer selectable to have the compass, that really frustrates me. It's minor, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I wanna know what direction that I'm traveling in up here on the HUD. And so I'll cycle through the other functions that it shows on the HUD, but again, you can't see the compass as you're traveling along. And I wonder if that is a firmware change or an update that Chevy could put out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cycle through that. You have your indication of what drive you're in, what angle your vehicle is at. And then you also have your speed limit signs there on the hood. That's just the speed limit and then the speed that I'm currently driving. And then you have your distance indicator. I have mine set to two car lengths um, and it tells you what your speed, your, your seconds of separation are. And then back to the compass. So again, this is one of the things that I don't care for and I wish Chevy would fix it, GM would fix it. I guess we'll see. On to the next tip. So my next dislike that we're gonna get into are the shifting points. I really don't care for the shifting points of these newer vehicles. My wife has a 2019 Toyota RAV4. The shifting points are just garbage. And so I'm gonna romp on this real quick. I have the 6.2 liter engine. And so I'm gonna romp on this real quick. and get out of this get and get into the highway. Now that was fine. The acceleration shifting points were fine. And I really like this 6.2 liter engine, by the way. If you have a choice between the 5.3 and the 6.2, please, for goodness sakes, get the 6.2. The dollar difference isn't that significant. And I'll look it up on my, um, on my tag. I'll look up how much it costs. But my point is, the shifting points in sport mode are really awkward. When you get caught between that 2000 or uh, yeah, 2000 to 3000 RPM, they get really funky. And I don't care for the jerking and what have you that comes with that. And so the other thing is that there's, and you know, you always get those things on Facebook where people are mainly posting negative things about their truck. And I get it. That's what the groups are for. You're, they're there to help solve problems and so on and so forth. I have a slight vibration in the truck that some people uh, talk about. I can't remember the term that's given out there, but basically transmission stutter, that's what it is. Um, transmission stutter, 
And I don't know if that's actually what's going on or not, or if that's just road vibration or what. But my point is, there are some reliability issues out there with the 10-speed transmission, and then also the shifting points of the vehicle when you get caught between that two and 3,000 RPM mark as you're going up through the transmission. I don't care for those shifting points. Again, this is a great truck, and I'm really being picky for the most part, um, but I really don't care for those shifting points. But I do want you to stay tuned for my number one dislike. And you may disagree with me in terms of what it is, but it means something to me in terms of my overall happiness with the truck. So stay tuned for my number one dislike. So this is my number one dislike about the truck and the way I use the truck. The navigation system. I do not like the fact that you have to pay for navigation. I love Google Maps, I love Google Systems. I don't use any other maps, I don't use Waze even though I know Google is, a, uh, is the owner of Waze. I don't use Waze, but to have to have a plan in order to have accurate navigation, I don't care for it. And so, what you have to do in order to get navigation through this system, not CarPlay right here, but through the actual native system to the truck, you see that dismiss that plan again. So I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss and I'm not shopping plans. What you have to do is you have to hotspot from your phone and I'll go ahead and walk through that real quick. You have to hotspot from your phone in order to get navigation. And so what you can do is you can connect and then disconnect once you load your trip. I gotta put my hotspot on my phone. Let Super Cruise take over for a minute. Cowboys, look at this mess. All right, so I'm now connected. I'm gonna go back to the navigation. Now I have my navigation. And so to have to go through these steps, use my hotspot or buy a plan, all of that is a downside to me. Again, it's a way to overcome it by connecting to your hotspot, but if you don't wanna use your data or whatever that is, that's the negative side of this to me. Again, love the features, just don't care for the way you have to get into the system. So going over the navigation system as my number one dislike. You tell me what your number one dislike is on your Chevy truck, GMC truck, or whatever that is. Because all this information sharing helps people make a good decision about what it is that they want when they purchase a vehicle. I wanna thank you for watching this video. I want you to like, share, and subscribe. And remember to always ride as if your life depends on it. Peace.